Hey, that was a short ride. How's old Maximilian? That must have been some talk. <laughs> if I tell you something, you swear not to repeat it? You want it in blood? Edmund! All right, all right, I swear. What? What is it? I... I don't want to bond with Bianca. I, I don't want to help her sort out her feelings about Kendall. What I want to do is I want to help her pack her cute little suitcase and I want to ship her back to Seattle on the very next flight. Hmm. So much for communication. <laughs> well, I, I really don't mean that. Oh, not much you well, don't. I, I adore Bianca. It's just so frustrating. The old uh, pony ride trick fails again, huh? I mean, Bianca has been horrible to Kendall. Erica, she won't talk to. I, I tried to get her to see that Kendall is as lost as she is. But every time I mention Kendall's name, Bianca looks like she's ready to kill. She definitely wants her new big sister gone, no questions asked. Imagine that. Imagine finding out you have a sibling that you didn't know about and not greeting her with open arms. Imagine not saying, what's mine is yours. Welcome to the family. Imagine, not for one minute, taking into account the other person's point of view. Sacre Blue, how is that possible? You know something, you, you can be a real jerk sometimes, you know that? Yeah, well, so can you. And you'll never let me forget it, will you? No, somebody's got to keep you honest, bro. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Edmund. And you weren't eight years old when you found out that you had a brother. You just acted like you were. You just weeded out all of the wisteria. Face it, bro. Bianca's not gonna give a hill of beans about her newfound sister. I mean, she's got the whole kingdom on the line here. She's not gonna feel sorry for somebody who can take it away from her. Yeah, you're right. How do we change her mind? We don't. Now, the situation's hopeless. Now, I know you don't like to hear that, because it's out of your control, but that's just tough. See, Kendall and Bianca, they're just destined to hate each other. Just like you and I do. So, uh, lay off the subject, don't force things, and give the girl some time. Now, repeat that ten times until you get it down, Pat. You know, it's unnerving having a sage living in the house. Go find Erica. Pass on the wisdom of what you have begun to grasp. What, is uh, abandoning Bianca part of the new order? No, you leave her to me, okay? All right. Listen, she probably just needs a little R&R. &R. I mean, you and Erica are a little intense these days. <sighs> Thank you, Edmund. Yeah, no problem. How are, uh, how are things going with you? Gardening is nourishment for the soul. You're beginning to sound like a fortune cookie. Can we go now? Uh, Bianca, how would you like to hang out with your Uncle Edmund for a while? I don't know. What if I promise not to mention someone whose first name begins with the letter K? Okay. For you. If I didn't know better, I'd say this is the proverbial little black book. I filled with names and numbers by next week. <laughs> you don't give a man much time. Oh, don't be so modest. There's a long line of young girls in our office eagerly awaiting the day you come back on the market. But the book isn't important, really. I, I just came by because... Well, I hope we can still be friends. Just because I have a niece who's a dunce shouldn't interfere with our camaraderie, should it? Phoebe, you old... Uh oh watch that old. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Oh, dear. How are you holding up, really, for true? Well, I got my mind set. You know, I'm not, um, I'm not going under. I start singing the blues a little bit. I'll just pick up a pen and write or do some gardening, give Dimitri a hard time. Good. I, uh, I think about Brooke every minute. Well, just keep fighting. If you need anybody to lean on, you know where I am. Thanks. Don't thank me. You don't deserve the hand you were dealt. Just be sure you stay strong and happy. That'll drive Brooke crazy. <laughs> Not unless I get there first. You won't. 
And just to be sure, I've taken the liberty of transcribing some names and numbers in your book. You didn't. I did. Look under R. I suggest your phone call, the first one be made to Juanita Ramsey's niece, Dina. She's a hot-headed girl. Oh, yeah? yeah? I'll keep it in mind. Yeah. Listen, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for this. I'm well, glad to see you. Aren't you even going to offer me a beer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Good one. Love you. You really got your daddy's eyes. I'll raise one chocolate chip. Come in. I hope somebody hurries up and wins all these cookies. They are sinfully delicious. Well, I thank you kindly for the compliment, but I got a fold. Well, I've got King High. <laughs> Looks like you and me, kid. What do you got? Three queens. Oh, mighty pretty ladies. Beat that, Eddie. Read them and weep. Full house. Oh, ah, you're lucky tonight. Oh, luck has nothing to do with it. Sharon Sunset with homemade cookies and a bevy of lovely ladies. I've got everything a man could ask for. Stop with the soft soap already. Hush up and deal. Yeah. Yeah. Not three inches and maybe two. Two inches. <laughs> <laughs> we, no, we haven't been going for three days. Well, boys don't grow that quickly. Yeah, well, ours does. He's going to be a basketball player, which reminds me, I'm going to put up one of the little mini basketball hoops right down there in the, in the driveway for him. I'm glad we beat Pedro. <laughs> I don't know if we did. The front door's open. Okay? What are you waiting for? You know damn well what I'm waiting for. Get over here. Come on. Oh, this is the first. It. Alley. Oh. In California, yeah. we did this. Yeah, well, that was California. You know? And this is, uh, this is Pine Valley. This is home. Besides, Jamie's probably right over there in the house somewhere, and I think he deserves the full treatment. I don't think most kids get to see their parents cross the threshold, do they? Yeah, well, our child is special. Just because we cut our trip short does not mean the honeymoon is over. Oh, really? Yeah, the threshold is the threshold. Besides, I'm not going to take any more chances with bad luck, so just hang on. Oh, how? Oh, whisk. <laughs> how the Don't. <laughs> don't drop me. What the hell? Oh, my. Let me call a doctor. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We don't need a doctor. Wait. Watch this. It's okay, Palmer. It's just us. Come on, off. Uh, Opal's not here to uh, appreciate your performance, and I'm sure as hell not going to fall for it. Come on, Palmer. Opal's not here. It's going to be a long wait. Look at him. Brooke, this he is might... the same show we put on at our wedding, okay? This is what we got to look forward to, Palmer, huh? Every time we get a, a spare moment alone, you're going to pull a, pa a face plant? Palmer, come on, get up. Get out of my house. Listen, I'll throw you out if I have to. Oh my God. Look. What? He's not breathing. I can't find a pulse. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, uh, this is an emergency. We, we need an ambulance. Come on, Palmer. Come on, damn it. Breathe. What do you want me to do? Count off 15. It's every 15 breath, all right? All right. All right. Uh. Come on, Palmer. Two, three, four, You're not dying in my house. No way. He just cursed the place and do me the same miserable three. like you led. Is that what you want, huh? You want to haunt me, old man? Make my life miserable from the grave? No way. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. The ambulance is on the way. Oh, my We my think love. he had a heart attack. Ted's, Ted's doing everything he can for him. Oh, Let my me God. Oh, my God. It's all right. It's all right. Come on, Palmer. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, old man. I always said you were soft. I always knew you damn well you wouldn't give up without a fight, huh? What you want to do? You want to hand Cortland electronics to me without a silver platter, huh? Come on, 
die, you old goat. I always thought you were good for at least one more round. What is it? Uh, breathe. Come on, Palmer, you can do it, huh? Come on, one more round. Give me a fight. Come on, show me what you're made of. Come on, Palmer. Give me a fight. Come on! Come on! Breathe. Palmer? Palmer? Can you hear me? Keep breathing. Just keep sucking air. That's right. That's right. Oh, thank you. He's breathing. Thank you. He's back. I'm not leaving you, Palmer. Oh, what about the baby? I gave Beatrice the rest of the... It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of Peter and, until Patrick gets here with Jamie, okay? I right, now, Palmer, I just want you to stay away from the white lot, okay? You just stay right here with us. Do you hear me? I'm here, and Peter is here, and everything is going to be all right, honey. It's going to be all right. Okay, Dad saved you. He brought you back from the jaws of death. Hopefully I won't regret it. But he's feisty, and I'm just praying that there's enough feist left in him to pull through. Mom, you've been here for hours. Why don't you come home with us? You can get some lunch and, and take a nap or something. I got 50 minutes until the powers that be will let me see him again. I think if I hurry, maybe I can make it back to your place and pack up my bags and move them over to Palmer's so that then I can come back and tell him that it's official, that I've, I've come back home to stay. Wait, wait a minute. Just hold your horses. You're not packing up anything or going anywhere. Don't you understand, Sugar? I turned my back on him when he was at death's door. Now, yeah, I thought he was faking. That's true, but I should have known better. And if he is really cashing in his chips, he isn't going to his final reward thinking that I don't love him because I do, and that's final. Of course you love him, but you also love me. You love Peter, you love Jamie, you love Brooke, you love Barry Manilow. You love hundreds of other people that do not lie to your face, trick you, or try to manipulate you, and those you love behind he your back. He is my husband. He's a lying he jerk. He literally forced you to leave him. No heart action. attack is going gonna, is gonna to ch change the kind of man that okay, he is. Okay, he isn't perfect. He's made some terrible mistakes, but he is in critical condition. He's a lying weasel. He's my husband, and I love him, and I never stopped loving him, even when I moved away. That's ridiculous. You feel sorry for him. The same way you feel sorry for any other lying weasel in critical condition, that does not make you responsible for him. Please, with both of you, bring your voices down. All right, but Ted, if moving back to Palmer's will help him to pull through, it will give him a reason to fight, then I will do it gladly. This is great. This is terrific. The man keels over, lands in CCU, and all of a sudden you're pulling out of the air instant forgiveness. It's absurd. Now listen, we're going. You're exhausted. I am taking you home, and I'm going to put you in no, bed. No, you are not taking me anywhere. I am going to your place on my own to pack. When pigs fly. And just how do you think you're made? How does hog tying you and throwing you and locking the how door sound? How does you just go ahead and try it? Sound? Stop it. Stop it. Really, both of you, stop this. I apologize for losing my temper, but you got to understand this is a this is a subject I feel very very strongly about. Well, the father of my youngest son is a subject that I feel very strongly about too, Ted, and I'm asking you to try to accept that. Fine, fine, I'll accept it. On one condition, stop talking about packing your bags and, and moving somewhere, please, at least until we know what we're talking about. Just promise me you won't do something today, okay? Really, you have more than enough time to make any sort of arrangements. Mama, listen, why would you want to move back into the house to make him happy when he's not even there to appreciate? Oh, well, you're probably very tired anyway. Why don't you just let us take care of you for a little while yeah. longer? You don't need any more stress, that's for sure. All right, fine. I won't move anywhere right now. 
Not this minute, but I'm, I'm still holding on to it as a future possibility. And you have to accept that because my only goal now, this minute, is to keep that man alive. The man is flat on his back and he's still pulling your strings. Gloria, would you please tell my mother that, that Palmer's so-called heart is nothing but a pump in dire need of a tuna. That you can hold his hand till the cows come home. But what he needs to make a full medical recovery is expert medical attention. Not my mother, the angel of mercy. Well, that just goes to show how little you know. What, you think that, that brushing his hair and cooing in his ear is going to unblock his arteries? I hate to disagree, but I think a positive attitude can do miracles. It could even cause healing more so than medication. Told you so. Mm-hmm. All right. I admit, a positive attitude has a lot to do with it. But let's face it, my mother throwing her body over Palmer's prostrate form, begging for mercy and it's out of some kind of guilty apology, is not going to tip the scales one way or another whether the old goat lives or dies. Right? It comes to life or death, nothing is certain. Look, maybe we can bend the rules a little and you can spend some time with Palmer now. Thanks. Palmer, wait. Listen. You're my mother. Maybe a lot of other things, but first and foremost in my mind, you're my mother and I love you. I want you to know that you're always welcome in, in, our, in our home from today and from here on out. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I never want you to feel like it, you don't have a choice, that you have to go back to Palmer because you don't have a place to go. Thank you. What, you want a divorce? pretty unresponsive in general, but especially so today. I came in, he said good morning, and that was basically it. I got called away, I came back, and he was asleep or pretending to be. I can't really quite tell. So this guy drops a few bombshells. He says, I didn't speak for two years, and I don't remember my childhood, and then he just clams up? Yes. You didn't press him? Well, I wanted to, but he was upset, you know? He's very scared. He's after this dream he had, he was absolutely terrified. And every time I have to reach out to touch him, he pulls away like he's, he's like he's been burned. And after they put him in those restraints, it was... What? They tied him down? It was routine. He was semi-conscious. He kept pulling out the IV. But when he came to and he realized that he couldn't move, he just went crazy. I mean, I've never seen anything like that before. And there's other times where he just... I don't know, he goes, he like shuts down, absolutely, completely. Like how, stare at a wall, what? No, it's not like a shyness or a withdrawal, he just, he freezes. It's like when you watch him, he's trying to, to disappear. I've, I know I'm not explaining this. No, 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 you're doing fine, disappear how? No, like, um, like, uh, like, like a deer. You know, when it knows it's been seen in the woods, it just stops. It's motionless. It just tries to blend into the forest. He didn't tell you what he saw, what's, what's troubling, what he's trying to hide from? All he said was if, if you move, they'll see you. What? If you move, They'll see you. Who's they? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't want to push it, you know? I mean, I'm so upset. You want to help him, but you're afraid what you might find out, Dixie? Okay. Okay, why don't, why don't I give it a try? Hey, I give great interview. I'm an objective third party. Maybe I'll find some answers. You think you could do it? Well, you ask the right five questions, you basically find out everything there is to know about somebody. And what are the right... Personal secret. Just different questions, different people. I think maybe a total stranger might be able to get some uh, opening up from him. I don't know. I don't, he doesn't trust anybody. Okay. Listen, I got a hunch about this guy, all right? 
everything you said sort of fits a pattern, and he may... What? I'm, I'm not sure, okay? But just, just trust me on this. Why don't you just introduce him to me? But you have to promise me something, is if he gets nervous or anything. Well, if he blends into the forest, don't worry about it. I'll just back off, I'll leave. No questions asked, I promise, okay? Just let me speak to him in a couple of minutes. Okay. Okay, your promise. <laughs> to meet you. How are you feeling? This is a friend of mine, Edmund Gray. Hi, um, Dixie said you caught some kind of foreign bug in a, in a port somewhere? Edmund's a really good friend, and I, I filled him in just a little bit about you. He thinks maybe that there, he could help you kind of sort things out. Uh, you spent some time in the Merchant Marine? just got very lucky, I guess. Serious? The way I look at it, you're my reward for doing something really wonderful. The only problem is I can't remember being that wonderful to anybody except you. And even that took some major trial and error. You've made a lot of people very happy, Tad. Don't underestimate what you mean to anybody. It's okay. I'm gonna go. All right? You don't have to talk to me. Open it up. Get out. 